flu flow test, right? A flu flow test is a test of the integrity of the flu. What you're checking is that the flu is complete, it hasn't got any holes in it or breaks or fractures, or it doesn't just stop at an open bit before it gets to the chimney, right? And you're, you're checking it's the right size, it's made of the right material, and that it's not leaking everywhere, and that it's not blocked, okay? Some flus, not here, but in chimneys, right, you will have a flu damper. I've got a, I've got a, a, a fire at home that burns coal. Up in the chimney, I, I adjust the flu to make the fire hotter or colder, right? They're illegal in gas, in gas flues. So they've got to be removed or they've got to be wedged open and screwed. So you, there's no way you can close it. So the first thing you do on a flu flow, in, a flu flow test is a visual inspection. Right? A visual inspection. You walk the flu from the bottom to the top. Right? And what you're looking for is, is the flu the right size, number one? Is it the right size? It will generally tell you on the flu what size it is. This is a 100 millimeter flu. Right? There's a 125. It also shows you on flus what direction the products of combustion are meant to be going in. Make no mistake, it's easy for an assessor to put a flu on upside down. And that's pointing down and you do your flu flow and hey, you failed and you don't know why because they're not going to tell you, right? So, is it the right size? Is it the right way up? Is it connected correctly? Right, is it made of the right material? This is an open fluid appliance. You can't have plastic here. Plastic would melt. On a room sealed appliance, not that you would be doing a flu flow on it because you don't need to, but on a room sealed appliance, these can be plastic. Okay. But on an open fluid appliance, they've got to be metal, got to be heat resistant. Obviously this is illegal, because that's just nonsense. Right? Does it actually move into the right thing? For a, an open fluid appliance, for the first 600 millimetres, it's got to be straight. And then you're allowed to put a bend in. The bend's not allowed to be 90 degree. The maximum bend is 45 degrees, maximum. Because you're relying on the heat to come up. Heat doesn't go sideways, heat goes up. So that's why you're only allowed that and it will move that way. So it's allowed how much up <coughs> before a bend? Before 600 millimeters. Before a bend. Before a bend. It's gotta go 600 millimeters straight before a bend, right? If it goes through anything, Right, you've got to have a 25 millimetre gap between the flu and any combustible material. All right, got that? Because the flu is going to get hot. If it touches something combustible, it's going to set it on fire. All right. So we've checked the size, the material. It's the right way up. It's going into the correct thing. Then you go upstairs or into the loft or wherever you can and you check every inch of that flue and you're looking for any fractures, breaks, rust, signs of um, sooting. Does everybody know what sooting is? Black deposits. Soot is only created by carbon monoxide. Healthy appliances do not create soot. All right? You then go up check it all, you go outside and you check that the terminal is A, the right type of terminal for the appliance and that it's in the right position. Because if it's in the wrong position, you should remember from your flu in lessons, if it's in the wrong position, the flu won't clear any products of combustion. Right, so you do that, fine. So you've done your visual inspection. You now come back into the room and you're ready to go. The test is, that the flu will still work with just the ventilation for the gas. Right? That's the test. Because nobody runs their fires and all that with their windows open. 
you're totally relying on your flue. Heating, heating systems are used in winter, not in summer. So, all the doors and windows get closed. That's called putting it under maximum stress, right? Or putting it in the worst case scenario. All you're relying on is the ventilation, right, from the roof. Now, you'll already have worked out your ventilation according to the appliance that you're using, right? So this is an 11 kilowatt open fluid appliance. Can anybody quickly tell me how much ventilation it needs? 20, 15, 20, 15, 20, 15, 20, 15, 20, 15, 20, 4 4 times 5, 20, 20 11, yeah? take away 7, whatever you've got left, 4 times 5 is 20, so it needs 20 centimetres squared. So you would check that that's got 20 centimetres squared of ventilation, yeah? Okay, so now you're going to test, now you've done your visual inspection, you've closed your doors and windows, you've put it in the maximum um, stress, now you're going to do the test. And the first test is a carpentry match. The only reason you use this is if it is spilling, you don't want to fill anybody's house up with smoke, first go off. So you're just going to check that, do you know what, at least it's pulling. Right, so you, you do your smoke match, and on this one, we're going to stick it in there. All right, flu flow test. It's going in there, right? And that's, that's pulling quite happily, yeah? That's pulling away quite happily. All that's letting me know is that the flu is pulling. And that's all I want to know. If it's not pulling, can anybody tell me what we do? And uh, 50, 50, 50, yeah, you're allowed to heat it up because a cold flu is not gonna move, right? You're allowed to heat it up and you heat it up for 10 minutes and you're allowed to do that three times maximum. If it still doesn't do it then, there's a problem with the flu, there's a, you know, there's a design fault. So, you can heat it up if it's cold. You if it was cold and it wasn't pulling, what would you do? You'd heat it up. And you can up to three times. Up to three times. Okay. Once you realise it's pulling, now you're gonna use your smoke match, right? And what size? Can anybody tell me what size the smoke match has got to be? Five meters cubed. Five, seconds. Five meters cubed of smoke in thirty seconds. It's on the tin. There are more than one type of tin in the assessment. If he gives you it, make sure it's the right one. Because he he might not, but he might give you the wrong smoke pellet, and you go, no, that's not the right smoke pellet. Oh, well done, yeah. Which one, what's the difference? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this creates five meters cubed of smoke in 30 seconds. How would you the other ones do 10 meters cubed of smoke in 50 seconds, 10 meters cubed of Which smoke in 10 seconds. Yeah. Pardon? No, this is the one. This is the one. this is the only one. So basically, when he gives it to you, just make sure one. you read that. And, and it and it must say five meters in thirty seconds. All right? All right. Because that's what British standard says. A, a British gas flue must clear five meters in thirty seconds. Let's get this horrible thing here without without burning myself. Right. This I'll have to show you from this side goes into the flue. Right? Ah. Right, it goes into the center of the flue. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. doesn't, it doesn't go up here on the downdraft diverter. It goes into the middle of the flue mm. because you're testing the flue. Now, while you're doing this, two man operation really, two person operation. Somebody's got to go outside and look at the terminal and make sure it's only coming out of one terminal. Right, have you seen on the, on the videos that I've got of the flu fails where they're coming out of two or three terminals? Yeah. Have you seen them on Edmodo? They're coming out of cracks in the bricks and all sorts. Right, that's what you're looking for. Right, yeah, it's a big stink, you know. I've got something to show you. 
Right, once you've been out there, you've checked the terminal, you've checked it all, it might take three or four of these. Smokes, uh, smoke pellets. Right, once you've done all that, as long as it's done, then your flu flow test is complete.